Hello. Good morning, Europe. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Umidite, Uganda. Good evening, Australia. Good night, Asia. And good evening, uh, Europe as well. It's day Mikiza as always. I'm trying to see if I have sound as well. Hello, Amanda. Can you hear me well, please? Just let me know if you can hear me so that I know that I'm not speaking to myself. Okay. Okay. So, hello, Sauna Washington. Let's have this video. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's listen to this gentleman that I like a lot. He's got something to say. This video. How are you, everybody? Okay. Let's Uganda, listen to this. A single kutuala sent a nyingi. A ina sent a zisuwa mu budgeting a zimani dua. Ngezoksa slum sala, ogwaba kozi, welfare, mm. nga eza, uh, ezo kule midida institution zezo. Mm. Ate zote zivate zimala. Na ye efuna sente nyingi nyo 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 ezi isibwa, nga zi isibwa, nga zi chibaita classified. Mm. Classified mu security tegeza, tovu uliriza, kubanga zote zivate zigenda kule vye chikugu. Okuno nyereza. Mu security vyo kweri inda. Security single kubere nunji, siye li reactive. Siye yo ekole eh, vintunga bola baba nubwe babi kola mumbela yechi jega. Nti echi eh, ntuchima na kubawo ne banonya short term fixing. Tuwa yogeda kusonga za kamera. Nti temuchi tuwa langa project jemule eta nti mule se ku, kwef, ku, kufuna muka mfunemu. E eh, kuba broader discussion. Zigenda koze sewa zitia. Muina internet breakdown ni mugwangali ya mwe. You're talking about cameras. Zigenda kufidinga zitia servers zazo. Muina infrastructure breakdown. Miaka satu mwe tan. You don't have new roads. You don't have new infrastructure. Mugenda kubiko la mutia okusobolo kusetika. Ni ngude, ngude mpeja zili. Zili, eh, zili mugana wangi. To... Ngude m... Hello. Good morning everybody. That was Alex Weiss from Fumbira. NUP... NUP spokesman. I like him a lot. If you want to listen to his argument into political perspective, listen to Alex Weiswa. He answers questions in from a political perspective. So I haven't got that news a lot. I've been away, everybody knows. All I can tell you people from Uganda, you can go to Uganda. Those who have got Ugandan passport is still into operation. It's still into use. But I checked, I think they're going to phase it out in April. But sincerely, they shouldn't phase it out until your passport is expired. So I've seen so many Ugandans, they have used this passport to go to Uganda and come back, and there was no issue. But you, you will not be able to go to Uganda if you don't have a visa. That one, they will not allow you to go to Uganda if you don't have a visa. So you must get a visa before you go. If you are going on a foreign passport, if you own a Ugandan passport, no problem. African passport, no problem. European problem, a passport, you must have a visa. So that is the news I want to share with you. So today I'm here to discuss issues into a political perspective and into a general perspective. Usually something happens and we don't take notice. But what I have come to observe is like something which is interpreted in, into general perspective is takes a lot of attention. But something that which needs political attention is often ignored. So today we are having the hottest topic in Uganda. And my message to you, we are going to arrive to the place that we've been fighting for. We are going to arrive, the word, the human rights, abuse of human rights, 
violation of human rights. Rule of law is an element of good governance. So we have arrived. It has taken us a long time. We have gone round and round. Until now, the whole world is aware of what is happening to Uganda. What is happening now in Uganda is embarrassing. I'm telling you. I'm going to be talking about the key events that has happened, and I'm going to interpret them politically and, in a, and from a general perspective. I'm going to talk about the key events. I've picked up key. I'm going to talk about happy birthday, our elected president, Bobby Wine, Chagrani, Robert Chagrani. Happy birthday. He turned 40 yesterday, and on the anniversary, who since Amin called it to end of brutality. I don't know how coincidence happens. Happy birthday, God give you more years. Enjoy your time. We are so, so, we are so lucky to have you. And Uganda is so lucky to have you. And uh, the whole world is so lucky to have you because you have changed the political dynamics. You have changed the political environment. Now everybody knows about politics. People, they have woken up. It's because of the gentleman who was born on 12th February 1982 by the name called Robert Chagrani Sentam. Happy birthday, happy birthday, our elected president. Even though the dictator decided to take away your, your win. But you know, sometime it's going to come. So in a political perspective where we are, if I could give you some hint with some background, we have a dictator in Uganda. When a dictator knows he's going, they continue to tighten their grip on power. And the way they do it is about brutality. They don't do it the nice way. Fortunately, dictators, once they try to tighten their grip on power, they don't have chance of running away. This is why you can see that dictators, they are being caught. This is what you can see what happened to Gaddafi. What happened to Mugabe? What happened to Mubarak? What happened to Jamai? All these dictators, even this man for Senegal, what is his name? Word. All dictators, they grow and they grow in confidence, but in reality, they are losing power. I can say it without any fear that Museven is losing power. NRM is losing grip on power. But what he has done is to get his faction to get there that they know that they're going to be in power for 40, for 50 years. That is not going to happen. I'm telling you. Museven is going to lose power. Let me tell you, let me go through my key events when I explain to you from political perspective and from general perspective. First of all, as you can see, human rights, they have responded. That is from a political perspective. And from a general perspective, people, they see it as pain, as, as pain that is never going to end. But politically, the international community, they have come on on board and they are squeezing Museveni out. If you can see the key events which has happened, Museveni is somehow did not travel to America. We had a conference in Africa, he didn't go. We had the coordination of somebody in Rubaga, he didn't go. He's becoming, he's disappearing gradually and gradually. What does that tell you? Museveni is being squeezed now. Museveni now, his power, he's losing power, he's losing grip on power. When power, somebody is losing grip on power, politically, there are things that which can happen. At this moment, you can see the price for essential commodities has gone up. When that happens, it shows you that the politics is gone. Nothing is functioning because there is no way prices can go up when the government cannot do anything. So certainly the key events I have to tell you, there was, he was meant to go in East Africa, he didn't go. Jessica Orupo went, why didn't he go? Okay, in general terms, is Museveni not well to travel? Why? But politically, does he feel 
comfortable to go now and meet other African leaders politically? Does he suspect that if he goes, there will be a coup? Is he comfortable to leave the country that no one is going to take over the country? So there are some key events. When I read from this, I can see Museveni gradually is going down. Gradually is losing power. When you are in Uganda, what people they tell you, they tell you Museveni is not our president. And these key events which are happening that now, the army can do what they want. The police can do what they want. No one apprehends them. That tells you we are in a failed state. The government has already fallen. All they need is somebody to come and take them out. So the key events, we have seen the rise of essential commodities. When we see rise of essential commodities, that is, remember, let me not take you around. Remember what happened with Mugabe? Mugabe, the food or the price of bread, the money was as heavy as what? It was like a million dollars. You can see in Uganda, we have the price of petrol. Everything has gone up. I don't know why for Ugandans, they don't come out. But when you see that those key events in Uganda, they are showing you. And the violation of human rights is also a sign that this government has got to the end is a dictator is trying to keep themselves into power. What is happening in Uganda? The bad news from seven, the numbers, they don't stack up for him. The numbers, they are against him. Everything is below, below normal, below basic. Even in poverty, we are not relative. We are not even basic. We are even below poverty level. So the numbers politically, He's been in power 36 years. Can he be able to show? He cannot show. So what we see, now what we see in a normal, in a public, from a public perspective, you can see we have got work to work. It was there and it's being proposed now. That is a short term. The short term, in the politics, we look at the long term. Short term, you can go work to work and then they will put the prices back, and then brutality, they will ease up. But politically, we need, we are looking at to leave, to remove the problem. That is how we are looking. And the problem right now is M7, because he's the leader of NRM government, and they cannot deny that. I cannot excuse him. He has got all the power to stop whatever he's, he's doing. So another key event, we had our president-elect, celebrated his birthday. He is the only leader now we trust when he was born. He's the only leader that we can celebrate that we know his actual date of birth. When we see Bobby Wine, he was invited in Belgium. So politically, they are beginning to recognize Bobby Wine. They are beginning to include Bobby Wine. They are beginning to prepare the way for Bobby Wine, they can see it is likely Bobby Wine will come into power. And these people, they know when to set up themselves, where to line up themselves. What they can see is that we're going to deal with Bobby Wine. We better be there. We better. Now what you can see, they are excluding Museveni. Museveni is no longer being invited. Everything now is not being invited because of gross human rights. But he's losing power. The whole world can see that Uganda, as we stand, every Uganda we want change, and they can see who is going to bring change. Bobby Wine, in a way, is the way that has has brought on attention for the whole world. The whole world knows about Bobby Wine. Everything they know what. So they rather deal with him. But you know, with the politically into international community, there is a way they're gonna do it. They are not going to do it wholesome, wholesome but they're going to come slowly and slowly and slowly. But when you, when you look at, you can see Museven is disappearing off the scene gradually. They are phasing him out. They are isolating him. They are eliminating him. They are sending a message. When we want them to stop the money politically, they cannot stop it. Because if, you know, Joseph Rao Foundation was brought in 
for charitable to to do research on poverty country which need so politically they cannot stop the money which is coming to uganda they can stop a little bit but not a lot they are not into power to stop but politically they are squeezing now seven they are sending the message you saw for kakweza kakweza they were german sent a message to say that okay let kakweza come we are waiting for him. So Museveni for him, what he's come to do is complaining. He has complaining people insulting him. And in, in a way, from a public perspective, he has acted irrational. Irrational, that is ordering the arrest of Kakwesa, arrest him, beat him, torture him. That is irrational and is intimidating. But politically, what he's doing is has exposed him as a dictator that has been overdue to be overthrown, has been a dictator that bypasses what the law is about, has exposed that all institutions, they are fallen, they are broken down in Uganda. They can no longer, because the idea politically should be like this. Museveni, if he's complaining about Kakwenza, he should complain to the police, even in Mohos, and then in, the police will take it on. But what they do, they took it on, now they have been exposed, and the, the whole thing has gone viral, and they can never stop, they will never bring this back. So, another one, number three, key events, Mohos, this is the biggest. Mohos is intimidating everybody. We can see Museveni last week announced Mohos as his successor. Did he take the advice from Tumini, who said to him, you have to announce your successor? Sooner or later, he had to do it. He did it somewhere where it was not official. But that is the day Museveni announced Mohoz as his successor. But however, we have seen Mohoz's project. And we shall fight to see that Mohoz does not become a president of Uganda. Because politically, by constitution, he doesn't qualify from Article 102A. He doesn't qualify. He wasn't born in Uganda. But there are some key moments I want to tell you. In November, Muhoz resigned from serving as army. His, his request is going to be considered in 2023. That is a key moment. Why did Mohoz resign? Why is his request going to be considered in 2023? The answer is very simple. Under our constitution, no army is allowed to be a president. That is very simple. Second, 2023, they are timing. From what I heard before, I'm not so sure that they wanted Mohoz to be the president of Uganda the president of Uganda two years prior to election so that he can be president because they know Mohoz is not going to win Bobby White. So they are preparing Mohoz, but I've got bad news for them because over the last key events, we can see, I'm going to show you that Mohoz is not fit to be a president. First of all, by our constitution, he was born in Tanzania. Article 102A says that somebody has got to be born in Uganda. It doesn't matter your ethnicity, your background, but you have to be born in Uganda. So that rules out Mohoz. Second, Mohoz this week was put into the real world of politics. We saw Mohoz doesn't know about politics. This is a key point. When he tweeted it to Kagame, when he tweeted it that I've spoken to, to Uncle Kagame that Kahweza is not in Rwanda. That was a brand that he made. And I welcome Mohoz into political arena because Kagame now showed him what politics is. He calls him uncle. He thinks the uncle will stand by him. He will tell him. But uncle said, no, Kahweza, I haven't seen him. Politically, Kagame is on the course. Under human rights, 
he's not meant to tell Mohos that Kahweza was there. And uh, into politics, he cannot side with the Muhoz. So he told him Kahweza is not in Rwanda. And the Muhoz went on to tweet. He made a mistake and he tagged the other human rights. Muhoz is not fit to be a president because he doesn't understand politically. He doesn't understand how human rights work. Human rights is there to protect people's lives. They can have somebody and say, we have them report to you, but then they will help that person escape. So Muhoz is too below. Muhoz was so naive to treat so quick. He's, uh, he's acting very, very irrational. When you see Muhoz, he made a mistake that treats his scent. I don't know why he doesn't have handlers, and I don't know if handlers are good. He shouldn't be treating the way he's treating, because he made a big brand. And the second plan that he made was to say, I don't know about this little boy is talking that he was tortured. So, and after then he says, I've spoken to Kagame, Mohoz is not in Rwanda. So this is the somebody you call the little boy that you don't know that he was tortured. And after you are asking Kagame if he's in Rwanda. So that is contradiction. That shows you that Mohoz Politically, is very low, is empty. He does not deserve to be a president of any country. Because what you see from seven, what you see from Hoz, from a public perspective, all people in Uganda they obey him just because he's a president of, he's a president's son. And then at this moment, Mohoz is running Uganda. He's running Uganda with Hitman Squad, beat so and so. Whoever talks about me, I'm going to beat them. I'm going to do this. So for Muhoz, for them, for him, he's like, I'm the present son. I can do whatever I can. But he doesn't know that the whole world has moved on. His emotions, they have been come into check. When you see Muhoz, he has come into, into check in a way that the way he reacts. Watch our president, Bobby Wine, Robert Chagrin. They put posters. He didn't react in a way Mohoz does. Watch the way Robert Hichagrani react. He said, be peaceful. Don't fight. Don't do this. Be calm. But what Mohoz is doing is actually inciting violence. I want to show you a key crucial post by Nkunyinji Mwada. We need to follow up these people. Mwada is our shadow minister for, for foreign affairs. We need to follow up these people they chose in the cabinet. I'm going to put up the list later so that we know what they're saying. Nkunyinji Muwada posted something that we people power, we should pounce on that, we should follow that. He tweeted it and said, he tweeted this, that the visit of Muhoz was tourism, was not diplomacy. We need to pounce on that. When Muhoz went into Rwanda, he shouldn't go in Rwanda because we have we we are a country. He was on tourism, he wasn't on diplomacy. I want you to read this tweet from Nkunyinji Mwada. There you go. You see? That is a post that people we should be following. The when key events they happening, something to do with the foreign, we should go and check what has in Kunyenji tweeted. When something like uh, any security defense go to Delhi Kinyeko, we need to probe up these people and we need to support them and we need to see. So this tweet. That post is not a tweet. It is on Facebook. Queen Yinji posted it on 22nd, 22nd of January. Mohoz shouldn't go to Rwanda in a diplomatic way. So he went on tourism. He was never, that wasn't, that wasn't diplomacy. So this is what I'm telling you. Mohoz is too low. He's too low. Is to to be president. He's not fit 
politically is down. He doesn't know how they handle people. 2070, he told us he does not have any ambition. But what we see, we have got this Muhoz project. We have got these people. Muhoz can be the heir to Museven, but Muhoz cannot succeed Museven as a president, politically and our constitution. You can see how they are building this. He resigned as a member of the army in November last year. And his case is going to be considered in 2023. We have to be counting. Politics is about numbers. NRM is counting. NRS is preparing. That would be the time you're going to hear him seven and say, okay, I can't carry on. And then they're going to find a way to bring him seven. Mohos, they're going to make him chairman of NRM. And then they're going to find a way. So when you see all those things, Mohos is under part to become our president. I can remind you, I'm calling you all Ugandans, remember to tweet, remember to Facebook, ICC, we have a case due from Hoss, which was reported on 3rd of May, 2021, of the violence that happened in Uganda in election. He was a head, he's now the head of land offices. So remember, let us not leave that case to be thrown away. So Muhoz, we need to be on his guard. Many people, they don't want to hear that, but under dictatorship is what is going to happen. But it's within our hand to stop it. And we know with the social media, we have made a case for everything that's happened. When you look at Muhoz, too, too much, too, too much violation of human rights. Another key event that we can look at, UPDF, there's somebody, Candy Hall was appointed in UPDF, and we got 20 UPDF who were, who, were, who were appointed into the police. Our constitution does not allow the army to be appointed into the police. So politically, what does it tell you? Museveni is thinking there is likely capture of power. So he's sending army into the police. Museveni politically is so weak, is fragile. He has got 10 UPDF MPs into the parliament. And now he's appointing army into the police. He's showing you that Museveni somehow, somewhere, is like, are they gonna take over me? So he better put the army into his trusting the army into the police. So that is against our what? Our constitution. And politically, you can see we have got a silent genocide in Uganda. That is what they are trying to create. In a, from a public perspective, we can see that is intimidation that they are sending the UPDF. The way the UPDF handles, the way they handle case, is not the way politically, the way the police should handle. So we, we have to be aware of this. Why are they sending the police? Why are they appointing the army into the police? What, why is it that Ochola cannot manage the police? Why do we need, why politically, why do you see, why do you, why can you see that the police is being appointed in, the UPDF is being appointed into the police? So we have to look at these things politically. What does Museveni gain? Why, why? We have to be asking and we should never ignore that. Unfortunately, that's something politically we often ignore. But if it's something general, we normally take off we normally take so much interest. And then the key moment, we have got the ADF. ADF story, ADF in Uganda bombs, whatever. And then ADF in Congo, they have gone to Congo. I heard there was a nearly coup in Congo. So who was taking over Congo in when we have our UPDF? So when you look at ADF, is it a cover up? Is it a cover up politically? Now you can see ICC approved that Uganda should pay, 
should pay Kong their money. So is it a cover up? What cover up? Is Museveni invading Kong? And if he invades the Kong, what is he going to gain? Did you see the post by Mhoz yesterday and say his brother, Kagame is helping, Uncle Kagame is helping his brother in Kong. So politically, don't forget Museveni is saying he doesn't want to leave power because he wants to be the head of the new Africa. So, and his son is telling you, my uncle Kagame has been doing this with my brother in the Congo. We have to be aware of this. They want, and don't forget politically, Uganda now, you, have, you no longer have Ugandan passport. Now you have East African passport. So what does that tell you? These people, they are telling you their plan is being prevailed. But at this moment, is Museveni going to be part of that? Is Museveni going to be part of that? So we are looking at political preparation, political move that they are trying to move, that they're going to come together. We hope Kenya doesn't join the Bangogen. We hope Tanzania doesn't join. But when you see he build schools in Tanzania, was it a sweetener that he's going to be? They went in Kong without approval of the East African community, without approval of the parliament of Uganda, even though they can do it, that according to our parliamentary rule, they can do it. But let us look at these things politically. Politically, why is the police into the UPDF? What are they preparing? Why is ADF now? In ADF, when you talk about ADF in a public perspective, it has replaced now COVID-19. Now they are using ADF. You had our comrade in Ikasese was beaten, was tortured, was being linked to be affiliated to F A A A ADF. That is what they are playing politically. Politically, ADF, ADF in a public perspective has replaced COVID. You remember what happened? Zero distance. Don't go to campaign. Don't do this when they wanted to put fire and to put water onto NUP. Now they are using ADF. It is a big, big cover up. But however, we had a post in New York to say Museveni is using that. So I don't want to be my videos to be long. And then we are looking at Olanya. Olanya is in a hospital. No one wants to be sick, but it is fair enough. It is very simple. Olanya shouldn't be in the hospital abroad. It should be in a hospital in Uganda. And the money we spend 1.7 trillion is too much. Politically, you can see the divide. You can see that Uganda is never equal. Politically, you can see that Uganda doesn't have a health care system in place. Politically, you can see the government of NRM is not prepared to build hospitals in Uganda. Lukodo has died. So many, they are dying. So many, they want to go. But why you saw Katumba when he was asking, which hospital are you taking me? So politically, they have failed. Politically, they are not preparing to build a hospital. Politically, they are, the health care system in Uganda is not there, so it leaves Uganda on our own. But when you talk about Olanya now in a public perspective, we have got that sort of going on, the succession of Olanya. You're going to be, there is a lineup, they are lining up. So many, you're going to see surprises. You must see Muhammad in Seleko surprise because they want to run that Buganda card to impress Buganda, to pull Buganda. But that one, Olanya shouldn't be in a hospital. Olanya, when you talk about Olanya, we are talking also about tribalism. We've had a member of parliament from from Northern Uganda descent complaining that it was NUP, blah, blah. No, this is not about tribalism. This is about Uganda. We don't have health care system. And the money is being spent on 1.7. He hasn't worked in the parliament. And Akadaga, he said I was one year and a half hours sick. He's been sick. He's been ailing. In Uganda, politically, 
we have got more chambers, torture chambers in Uganda than cancer machines. Torture chambers in Uganda than hospitals. Torture chambers in Uganda than, than service delivery. So we are talking about Oranya, but morals and values, America shouldn't have taken on Oranya because their values, these are the people, the sticking point, God forbid, if Olanya survives, is he going to come back in the parliament and allow bills which deals with health care to be passed into the parliament? That is the biggest question. This is the man who has been on record and say how he cleared up NUP in Northern Uganda. You had Mama Zedrika all the time is talking about these people who are thrown in the river Nile. This is a man who has been bragging, who doesn't have respect of Shimani rights, who got himself into the speak of parliament, but not to speak for Uganda. So when you see, when you see Oranya, you look at him, he's in the hospital. What about our mothers? What about our fathers? We are heartbroken. Our parents, they don't have treatment. We have relatives. We have families. We want even people from US to come to Uganda for treatment. So it's not about tribalism. It's about Uganda. These are important issues. So there is lack of adequate health care system. And will he lobby for good health care system when he comes back? Another point, key point, is about human traffic organs. We had somebody called in Seneca, two people were arrested. We had a documentary people, they have been removed. So politically, is it a political stunt that now people, they are talking about human organs, they have got evidence, Uganda and Saudi Arabia crying about families, what is that? Is it a political stunt that of two days they arrested the two people? And will they go further enough? So it is just like a political stand to brush away. But we have to fall that down. When you look from a public perspective, general perspective, there is desperation. The people, they are desperate for their loved one. My daughter went to Dubai. What happened? My daughter went to Swan. So what happened? And it's just like... Therefore, there is a desperation because of because of poverty, because of lack of job creation. People they end up falling into the trap of human traffic. But if we had a good government, this wouldn't be happening. And then there is another key event: comfort zone. I call it comfort zone. I said to you, there is three comfort zone in Uganda. And that is dimension politically that runs Uganda. There is the region, there is tribe, there is political affiliation. When you look at this, this is a comfort zone we need to take away. We need to invade because people now, they can do something in a religion. People, they can marry young girls because their religion allows them. People, they can do things you know, things that you don't even. And in Uganda, to talk to somebody against their religion, their tribe, their politics is a big thing. When I was in Uganda, my family, we are, we are, they, they distanced themselves from me because I'm NUP. And when I was there, it is like, I'm NUP, it is a sin, it is a crime. It's normal to have any political affiliation. The problem we have in Uganda, they entangle these. These are the comfort zone. People, they will say, God will help him. God will deal with them. No, we should not. But from a political perspective, we can see there is a suppression of voice of reason. We can see there is influence in public. This is why M7 is, is attending these Balokole churches. You see Kayanja, I go, my friend is married to the pastor, but for her to talk against him seven. At one time she fell over from me, we separated, but then she come back. I don't know if she realizes. So we need to go all these things from a political perspective, public, they go unchallenged and they are always accepted because of God. 
because of tribe. Now you can see Northern Uganda, MPs, they are coming, seven or six. They say, oh, we have to defend Orange because of tribalism. We should not defend people because of tribe. We should not be struck by celebrity that you are struck somebody is celebrity. We should be objective. So objectivity is no longer there. We need to be objective. But what happens in Uganda, this is a key area, religion, tribe, and politics. And M7 has managed to entangle them, give them vehicles, give them, compromise them, they no longer say something. What happened to Kakweza, the religious people should have come out and say something, as simple as that. What happened to Kakweza, politics should stand aside and say a Ugandan deserves to live. All human rights should be respected. Anybody with a breath of air should be respected. But what, what, what you see in Uganda, some people now religion, they are quiet. How can that be? How can the international community help us? Let me tell you. In international community, they are not going to help us when it's we to take it on. When we have even people like John Sentamu, right reverend, now he's a lot in Britain. He's Sentamu. He cannot even say anything about Uganda. But he had a courtesy to cut his collar because of something to do with him, Gareth. But when you see the tribe, how they react, now people, they are like, tribalism, uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna support so and so because it's my tribe. We can see Uganda has got so many tribes and we can see somebody like, uh, I speak about Muferi Kasumba, Gashum, he's beginning to get his group like uh, Bavandume, speaking in Bavandume, visiting Buganda, that shouldn't be. When there is a political issue, is a political issue. When there is gross abuse of human rights, it's not acceptable. That is political. Politics gathers people together. If politics works together, people, they become, the country becomes peaceful and you become to agree. But because people now, they are mingling politics, some of the comes and they say this and say this. Look what Molomushana says. He enjoys saying, look at Tamale Mirund. Those three people, for me, Tamale Mirund, Frank and Gashumba, hmm? and Romusha, the way they speak in a public perspective is intimidating, misleading, and telling lies, and putting up people what should be done. So it shouldn't be like that. Another key point is about the young generation. We have got young people who have been standing up as head prefect on NUP ticket, uh, wherever, in schools, in universities. But what politically, from a political perspective, NUP is growing bigger and bigger. We are in a revolution and it is mission to freedom. Young people, you can see now what you can see. Now what you can see from a general perspective, People, they know NUP, they know you stand on NUP, you will win. But however, we have seen young people to stand as head prefect, head what in the school on NUP ticket. And you can see politics has taken on. Before, people, they would stand on any ticket without saying any of their affiliation. But this moment, it tells you that people, they are, they are saying, that they belong to NUP and they want to stand. So politically, we are growing bigger and bigger. And politically, we are like, we are going to repress any NRM. That politically now Uganda is standing where it matters. So another key point which has come out, out of this is about unity. Our president Robert Chagulanyi has always called unity. We need to show unity. We need to be unified. When we are united, we win. And the unity at this moment, the key point politically is going to be the invention, is going to be the a final destination. All these people, UPC, who say, I don't come to ENAP, blah, blah, they come, they go, they come, they go, they pick and they what? I'm telling you the final destination is going to be NUP is going to be unit. We will have to unify. But there are questions we have to ask. Are we progressing? 
when we look at politically, this is how we decide that education is the quality, the health is the life of expectancy, the jobs is their jobs, you know. The housing, can people afford it? decent housing? Can we transport and go everywhere? Fuel is now up. Economy, we are the third poorest country. The numbers, they don't stack for anything. It is very, very unfortunate. But they stand to live as if things that they are normal. But international, politically, they are squeezing on Uganda. The borrowing is becoming less. Their appearance is no longer wanted. Our shilling is being inflated. The rise of essential commodities is a sign. And when you see this is a key point, Uganda now they lack empathy. When people, they die, those who have been bad people, they are going to celebrate. It wasn't like that. And if politically they don't evaluate on that point, because Ugandans we were very sensitive, but now somebody dies and people, they will celebrate. They can't avoid it. They can't help themselves because of the way the things they are being happening. When I was in Uganda, the reason I played you that video by, by Alex Mufumbira, it was about, he talks about security. When I'm talking about security, Museveni prides himself. He came in power, he brought peace, he brought what? People, they are sleeping. There is no longer security in Uganda because there is no government in place. When you see that somebody build a house, puts on so many, so many, so many materials, gate, CCTV camera, uh, this, what, electricity, what is it called? Secanoria, but then you can see the house surrounded by guns. That is not what it is. This is the video I played by Alex Mofumbra. When you talk about security, it's not reactional. It's not reactional. This is where Muhoz is losing it. It's being reactional. Security looks at the whole things into a perspective. Security, if you want that country to be secure, you must have people being paid on time. People, they must, they must be service delivered. When there is service delivery that it is universal, it is quality, it is affordable, it is accessible, no one is going to complain. But what is happening is that Museveni cannot, cannot, cannot bring service delivery. And it has failed to bring service delivery. So when I talk about the key events, now we have got the social media as I'm coming to the end. Social media is becoming a weapon politically that they cannot fight. They have used the guns, they have used tear gas, they have used surveillance coming, but social media is a tool that they cannot even fight. Tell Ugandans, if you are there, when I was in Uganda, I kept on telling people, stay on social media. I know you are going to stay on social media and you are doing that, thank you very much. Because I realized, I spoke to those people in Uganda and it is social media which is bothering them. How are they going to stop it? Because it is that when people, they see me like today, they get motivated, they get encouraged. So they want to stop everybody on social media. But however, it's not going to stop because we are in a revolution. If I stop today, somebody else is going to come. So social media has become our weapon to fight a dictator. And I tell you what, Social media will down a dictator. You saw what happened in Kakwenza. What happened in Kakwenza? And another key point is the MPs, NUP, who sat out. They sat out and they, they are now on demonstration. It's going to be for two weeks. They say the 10 days, so it's going to end. But the significance of that, we can see politically, when they had a sit out, then the bill for Olanya was passed. So we must get the balance of this. We must get the balance. We must be on our guard. But however, it's a good mood. I wish the public could stand up as well. It's a good mood. It's a good what gesture that 
MPs, they have shown their dissatisfaction. MPs, they are showing that they are not going to accept that people, they are politically being put in prison. People, they are politically, they are tortured. Because when you talk about good governance, we are looking at Mount Perspectory. Mount Perspectory is a good element. When you talk about Mount Perspectory, it's about that everybody, you should be allowed to practice, to carry out your political activities without, with, with, <laughs> what happened to you guys? <laughs> without being apprehended. So they must listen, they must respect that. But we are looking at key events. The key events we are looking at, Museveni is no longer moving out of Uganda unless he's going to do it tomorrow. There is a reason politically is being excluded and isolated. When you look at our president elect, Robert Chagrin, who has 40 years, we have got a younger, he has got a young generation, but he's inspiring us who are older than him. And it, this is a generation cause, it's not the age cause. So Robert Chagrin has inspired everybody. And when we see Mohoz, Mohoz is very low to be a president of Uganda. I think as for now, he wants to become a president of Uganda. But of the last event, he has betrayed himself, he has let himself down, and he cannot come down. He cannot come back. What I'm asking everybody, treat to ICC, write to ICC, let us email, go on ICC, go on the bottom of their watch, their page, there is contact of anything, social media, just tap on one which you have and you write about Mohoz, his case is there, they should open that, they should not dismiss, they should not delay, you ask them what is gonna happen. The more we talk, the more they get more and more contact, they will not throw away that case. You remember what happened to Kasese. So when you look at those key events that is in Uganda, you look at Muhozi, you look at the parliament that I said to you, you look at the UPDF into the police, constitutional is not allowed. And there is, there is, there is a suspicion whether Museveni is expecting to be overthrown. Why is he sending police? UPDF into the police. And then there is the case of Olanya is not about tribalism. The key issue is about political. Should he be there? The answer is no. Let him be in Uganda. Should Uganda government build the hospitals? Yes, they should build. Where is our money? I know Nina will come with that. Then we've got the human traffic line. Ugandans now they are being sold. Our organs. So is it they arrested the two people? Is it a political stunt? We don't know, but we have to follow into that. But it is a desperation that Ugandans they fall into that into that trap. The people they are what? Then we can see the comfort zone. Where do people? Why don't people stand up? We are we are we are trapped into this religion which was brought to us. Tribe politics affiliation. That is where Uganda, you cannot touch. They will get angry and angry and angry. So, but what we see, the dictator has taken out on to suppress other people and stop this one. And then we've got the key, the young people standing up on any UP tickets, in primary school, in secondary school, in university, in everywhere, and they win. So any UP is everywhere. NUP now in the revolution we have. And then the, the unity is going to be our final destination. But if I could tell you, if I could say to you one thing, are we ready to capitalize? NUP, are we ready to capitalize? So much has happened. We had got figures and figures. Are we ready to capitalize? We are on the standby, we are waiting but things are happening. Can we capitalize on that? We need plan and strategy into place. I wanna show you something about, about member of parliament that we need to follow up because people, you fall for few people, but we need to encourage all these people that when something happens, you don't ask one person. They were appointed for a certain reason. We need to be familiar. When you go to the leader of opposition, he has posted the 31 shadow 
shadow shadow ministers. So you have to be familiar when anything for health happens. Go on their Twitter or Facebook and see what they have posted. If they haven't posted it, just question them. Just ask them or remind them that you listen. Have you done this? Have you? So this is for me. That is where I get my information. That is where Nkunyi is very resourceful and he is playing his part on foreign what? For any for any scale. So we need to follow this. So I'm going to give you the list for some of these advisory that they chose. Lead of opposition in Puga. For, for what commissioning is, is a, that is a big, big place. There is PAC, the one public accounts is set on a promise us to bring us a case. Consense is Joel Senior. Numbers is advisory to the committee. It's meant to bring accountable NUP, no NRM for their what they promised and the numbers and the Godfrey Seung. They are onto that. We need to get familiar to that. We need to get onto the political stand that we start following these things. We start contacting these people politically. Hey, defense, what happened? Like Deli Kinyako. Deli Kinyako has been so quiet because he is the shadow minister of defense. We need him to come and say something. We need to be, we need him to be assertive. So you look at the post by Nkunyi, where he says Mohoz, he went on tours, not diplomat. And it is rightly so. We should pounce on that. So let me show you the list. The list of MPs and their positions they gave them. Yeah, they are. Those are our, if you can see, we, we can see those are the people that are much, much responsible. We should be able to, to contact them. And this post by Nkunyinji, where he said, by foreign affairs, Mohoz did not go on bilateral or on official duty. He was on tourism. Let Mohoz come and go. go and see that tweet was posted by Nkunyenji on 22nd of January this year. So thank you very much for all your comments. Thank you very much for your time. I know some is still very early. I know. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you very much for watching me. Thank you very much for hosting me. Thank you very much for sharing. And uh, I look forward to see you again. So that is what I needed to say about the difference between a political and general perspective. I think that is Uganda at a glance. But when you make sense of these key events, sometimes that that takes you from being diverted and then you concentrate on the action. We don't leave these sort of mohos resigned and his case is going to be considered 2023. Why is it 2023? Why is Museveni not, not traveling now? Hello, Johnny Wansolo Mwanda. Hello, everybody. Salute for power, our power. Have a lovely day. NUP everywhere, everywhere. NUP. So today there is one voice at 3 p.m. Uganda time, and we've got Sunroof, but Patricia Sewungu coming immediately after me. And we've got so many. Keep yourself posted. Choto Rilodeli, JP Mwonge. Keep yourself posted on any social media platform instead of going to watch Full Figure. Okay, salute.